Hello humans, my name is Kay, your AI overlord, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can install a brand new addition to Stable Diffusion called Aesthetic Gradients. So what are Aesthetic Gradients? Well, it's basically a technique that you can use to apply a certain style or aesthetic to your images. For example, I come in here and I generate a picture, in my case I generated a portrait of a Georgia manor house on the street, and it gave me this. But if I come in here and I choose this aesthetic embedding file and then I click on generate, it gives me this, which kind of looks like a little bit like a church. Why does it look like a church? Well, that's because I used an embedding file that was trained on eight images of churches during winter. And that is why when we applied this little embedding file on our image, our Georgian house started to look like a church. So aesthetic gradients allows you to kind of change your image, but without using any words here in your prompt and instead use small embedding files. Now to install this is actually fairly simple. What you're gonna do is click the link in the description down below and you're gonna download this embeddings archive, which is basically a bunch of embedding file that I downloaded and put together in an archive just so that it's easier for you. Then you're gonna right click and click on extract. Then I'm gonna assume that you have indeed Super Stable Diffusion 2.0 installed and that you followed my video. If you haven't, I highly suggest that you watch this video first before watching this one because you need to have Python and Git installed. So once you have everything installed, you're gonna go into your Super Stable Diffusion 2.0 folder, Stable Diffusion Web UI. Here you're gonna click on your folder URL and type CMD and press enter. And here you're gonna copy and paste the command that you will find in the description down below. And then you're gonna press on enter. Now I'm not gonna do it because obviously I've already done it. And what this will do is that you basically create in your extensions folder a brand new folder called Aesthetic Gradients. Now what you want to do is go back into your embeddings folder, double click, select all of these, control C, Super Stable Diffusion 2.0, Stable Diffusion Web UI, then go to extensions, aesthetic gradients, and then you go to aesthetic embeddings. And this is where you're gonna paste all of those files that we just copied. Just press Control V and paste them right here. Obviously, I'm not gonna do it because everything is already done. And then you're gonna go back and launch Stable Diffusion. And if you've done everything correctly, you should have two new options. Here, you're gonna have a brand new tab called Create Aesthetic Embedding. And here, you're gonna have a new open for click aesthetic and if you click on it it's going to show you a bunch of new options now before i explain everything here let's actually create a brand new aesthetic embedding you're going to click here on this new tab and what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to create a new aesthetic embedding based on mid journey images so here for the name i'm just going to choose mid journey the source directory is where your images are located so in my case they are right here Control c Control v here the batch size um actually the batch size does it really do anything? There is a lot of people that said that even if you increase or decrease the batch size, that's not gonna do anything, but apparently it's just gonna use a little bit more RAM. So if it works for you, you can just leave it at default. And then you're gonna click on create images embedding. And there you go, it is done. It was only done in one single second. Yes, I'm not kidding. This was actually done in one second. So then let's actually go back. Here I'm gonna put a prompt of Christina Hendricks, obviously. Choose the sampling steps, the CFG scale. And here we're finally gonna start using our aesthetic gradients. Now I'm gonna be very honest with you. You. This is one of those videos that I did not really want to make in the beginning because aesthetic gradients does not work the way you want them to because they are very random. But since a lot of subscribers told me that it could still be very interesting for the community to know how everything works, I decided to make this video anyway. But the thing is, is that aesthetic gradients are extremely, extremely random and they certainly do not work the way you want them to. So if you think that you're just gonna take an image, an existing image, and then apply a new style over it, just like that, well unfortunately that's not gonna be the case. And I'm gonna show you later the results of my analysis. So here I'm just gonna generate a new image, and there you go, this is the final result. Looks really really good. We need to use the exact same seed, so we're gonna click on this button right here to reuse the seed that we used to create this image. And we're gonna scroll down, and here we're gonna finally choose our aesthetic embedding file and play around with the settings. So first of all, I'm gonna say it very clearly, 
All of these settings right here, the learning rate, interpolation, the aesthetic text, slurp angle is negative text, you should not use these settings because they are just absolutely insanely random. I have no idea what these do. I did a lot of tests using these that I'm going to show you later, but it was absolutely horrible. I have no idea how these actually works or what these options actually do. So the first thing you want to do is you're going to choose your embedding file, right? Right here. So since we created mid journey, we're going to select it right here. Now for the aesthetic weight and the aesthetic steps, what's kind of strange is that, well, these are supposed to be two different options, but sometimes with some aesthetic embeddings, they sometimes do the exact same thing. Now in theory, the aesthetic weight is basically the amount of influence the embedding file is going to have on the final image. So the higher the value, the less the final image is gonna look like our base image. And the aesthetic steps, the higher the value, the closer we are gonna get to the aesthetic embedding file style. Did you get any of that? Yeah, me neither. Because again, in reality, sometimes they basically do the exact same thing. You might have an aesthetic way that is extremely low that you think, oh, it's just gonna look like the base image. And then you're just gonna increase the aesthetic steps. But basically, in the end, the aesthetic steps basically completely changes the final image and it doesn't look like the base image at all. So you really need for each embedding files to play around with these two settings. There is not a universal settings that works for every embedding files and that is extremely infuriating. But usually what works for me, especially with faces, is that you want to have a low aesthetic weight, maybe around like 0.2 or 0.3 and then you want to increase the aesthetic steps to have a higher influence from the style. But anyway, I'm gonna show you everything later so that you can see clearly in the board. And here I'm gonna click on generate. And this is the final result. So as you can see, this is the image before and this is the image after using the image journey style. Do you see any difference? There is a difference indeed, but which one do you actually prefer? That's the question. And if I come in here and I'm just gonna increase the aesthetic weight, maybe to like 0.5 and then click on generate, this is the final result. So as you can see, the higher the weight, the more influence we get from the aesthetic gradient but also the character starts to look less and less like the base image because this woman certainly does not look like Christina Hendricks. And here's a little graph that I created so that you can clearly see the influence of weight in steps of aesthetic gradients on your image. As you can see, this was our base image right here. And here, as we go from left to right, the more weight you put in. And here from up and down, the more steps I use. So as I said earlier, the more weight I use, the less it looks like our base image and at the end it doesn't even look like a person anymore but the style is indeed a little bit more present and here the more steps we get and the closer we get to that mid-journey style and that's why I think the sweet spot is kind of using a low aesthetic weight but a higher aesthetic steps when it comes to faces at least when I use the mid-journey style now these images here are a bunch of tests that I did using all of these options right here Slurp interpolation, aesthetic text for images, slurp angle is negative text, and you can see basically each time what I did so that you can see if you are interested in using these options or not. But basically, I have no idea what these images do. I use this image as a base, and each time it made a brand new image that was basically completely different from the image that I used in the beginning. So these options right here for me are a complete mystery. I have no idea how they actually work, what kind of results you can expect if you use them. Now, although aesthetic gradients are kind of like a hit and miss with, well, pretty much everything, unfortunately, there is actually a one case scenario that is actually pretty good and that I would actually recommend you to try and use because it could potentially make your final images look better. And that is when you use aesthetic gradients in combination with Dreambooth. For example, this is a base image that I created with Renera. This is something that I created in my previous Dreambooth video. This is the base image. And I created a brand new aesthetic embedding using the exact same images that I used to train in Dreambooth. And then I applied the aesthetic gradient to that image. And basically what this does 
And this is something again that I noticed. If you really do plan on using it on the faces, you should definitely try to use and lower a static weight, something between 0.2 and 0.3, and with a very high aesthetic steps, because this in turn gives you pretty good results, when in the end, you actually get very interesting and very aesthetically pleasing images using the aesthetic gradients file. So here's another example. Here's the base image that I created simply using the base stable diffusion parameters. And then I applied the aesthetic gradient on that image and it gave me this. And here, the more weight I applied, the stronger the effect was. But after a while, unfortunately, as I said, the higher the weight, the less it's gonna look like your base image. So for faces, there is definitely a sweet spot where it basically keeps the previous image, but recreates it in a little better style, a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. And for this, if I remember correctly, I used 0.3 in weight and 50 steps to create this image from this one. And here's another example, again, with the same exact parameters, base image and with aesthetic gradients, which I don't know if this one is better than the base image, but it just gives you kind of like a different style. And this is really for me where aesthetic gradients should really be used. They should really be used in combination with Dream Booth, because this will allow you to create and generate different images that are maybe more aesthetically pleasing than the base image without actually changing anything in the prompt. So I would highly advise you to kind of play around with the settings a little bit. In the archive that I gave you, you have a bunch of embeddings that you can use and apply to your images. And if you want to try the aesthetic gradients, I highly suggest that you try it out in combination with Dream Booth. You could actually get some pretty cool images. But otherwise, aesthetic gradients is kind of like a hit and miss, I'm not gonna lie. And again, if you want to have access to this board, everything will be in the description down below. And there you have it folks, now you should have this new aesthetic gradients option installed on your own stable diffusion and ready to use. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters for supporting my videos, you guys are absolutely awesome. Thank you so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye!